Hey guys, I'm Shay and I'm here with a highly requested video. There are a ton of comments I get on my channel about people wanting to learn anatomy or improve their skills, which is amazing and I'm so happy for you guys feeling passionate and driven to draw and improve your skills. So I just wanted to share how I learned anatomy, what I'm doing now to refresh and level up my skills, and ultimately just sharing free learning resources and some of my favorite YouTube channels and artists who have so much great knowledge and understanding of anatomy for artists. There's so much free content on YouTube about anatomy and figure drawing and that's how I learned and I just wanted to show you guys you don't have to spend tons of money on classes, you can learn right from YouTube and improve your skills so much from just watching YouTube videos from the creators I will be mentioning. I want to preface that this video isn't necessarily a step-by-step -step tutorial on how I draw the human form. So many more experienced and advanced artists have made great videos and content about that, which I will be sharing in this video, but more of how I learned and practiced through YouTube and online learning resources and different exercises I do and tips I remember when drawing figures. And if you like to see my notes and a huge compilation of my own figure and anatomy studies you can check out my shop for my anatomy sketchbook PDF as well as I just launched my shop last week with a bunch of new prints and stickers and all that fun stuff so if you're interested in that go check it out but yeah I've been feeling a little rusty with my skills lately so I'll just be taking you along my process of refreshing and improving and explaining my thought process as I do so and with that being said let's get to drawing Okay, so before I do any actual like big study studies, I want to kind of get a benchmark to how my skills are right now, how I'm feeling, so I can look back in like a week or so and see how much more comfortable and hopefully how much I've improved. So yeah, I'll, I think I'll do some like 30 second, a couple 30 second gestures and then see how I'm feeling and then move into longer poses. But really what I'm trying to look for is key anatomy points that I've been missing in my artwork and not necessarily try trying to draw uh, specifically from life, but trying to really understand structure so I can like, for lack of a better term, like stylize it and exaggerate it and make it work with my own, my own way of doing character art and drawing the human form. So yeah. Let's get into it. So as I'm showing my figure drawing and anatomy practice, I wanted to talk a little bit about my history with life drawing and then move into the resources I use to get me there. About sophomore year or junior year of high school, I really discovered that I wanted to be able to draw the human figure accurately from life and from imagination. I had like a ton of characters I wanted to draw doing fun things and create stories and possibly do like comic artwork. And I just wanted to have a solid base of anatomy knowledge and just general drawing knowledge to be able to do that and not get frustrated every single time I wanted to draw. So character focused illustration and visual visual development work interested me at the time and, and still is my main focus with my art. And I knew that art required a proficient knowledge in, in drawing fundamentals and technical skills. So like many a young artist growing up in the early internet age, I began searching on YouTube for anatomy videos, looking up on Google some online figure drawing databases and basically anything I could get my hands on to supplement the education that I felt was missing from my high school, but also something that I could get for free because I didn't have copious amounts of money to spend on art classes. So I went to an arts focused high school, but it covered more general and fine art techniques and methods rather than more intense illustration and drawing classes that I really wanted. The internet, more specifically YouTube, really ended up becoming my main teacher and I probably learned the most on this platform than anywhere else. And this is someone who went to art school, graduated with their BFA in drawing and painting and has invested in other art online art resources. I feel like YouTube really is such like a monolith, free knowledge that's out there and you can just learn so much just from other creators. But that being said, in-person figure drawing classes in high school and college did help me a lot with mileage and getting critiqued on my work. And it's super beneficial to draw from life if possible. And critiques can make you drastically improve at like a rapid pace, but YouTube has so much variety and really has something for every learning style and genre of art. And it's free, that's like the best part. Unless you're paying for like YouTube premium or like channel memberships, but like most of the time it's free. So the variety of experience 
experiences and artists showcased on YouTube really showed me so many different paths and methods to learn what I want. And taking bits and pieces from every channel, I was able to acquire a fair amount of knowledge and skill. Now, I'm nowhere near perfect. There's still so much I want to improve and get better at, but I really want to delve back into the YouTube art learning space to level up my skills. That was like basically the foundation when I was growing up trying to improve my skills. I would always go to YouTube, look things up, learn from other artists, and I kind of want to tap back into that. So in a previous video, my anatomy sketchbook tour video, I covered my last four years studying anatomy and developing my skills to be able to draw the figure from imagination. Now those four years weren't constant practice and sometimes the practice I was doing wasn't exactly helpful, but with what I learned from other artists and figuring out what works best for me over time, I'm sort of relearning everything in a more effective way and hopefully this will lead to long-term improvement and a higher quality in my artwork. So I'm just gonna go over the channels I'm learning from, websites I use, and some Instagram accounts I follow for improving my art. So for this portion of the video, I'm basically gonna go through my favorite channels and videos that offer a lot of key insight and education with learning and improving my anatomy and basically general drawing skills. I feel like a lot of these channels really help just in general drawing skills, but I'll explain how I applied and what I've learned and how I practice based off of these channels. And I'll also have them all linked down in the description, so make sure to check that out. So first off, we have a channel I just found a couple months ago, Kasem, an artist and streamer over on Twitch who makes character art professionally for Powerhouse Studios and hosts weekly streams. Actually, it's not just weekly streams, it's like multiple days throughout the week, covering art fundamentals and offering free art educational content and sharing his journey of picking up art after not drawing for six years. First of all, I think his story is really inspiring for artists of all ages. He left art school to become a software engineer, not really thinking he would ever be good enough to be a professional artist, but then began drawing again after such a long time and managed to develop his skills enough to attain an art industry position in the matter of two to three years of practice. This shows that there's no one size fits all journey for creatives and it's never too late to start or improve, which I find really motivating as someone who just graduated college but still feels like my skills aren't where they want to be so it's it's never too late to relearn and refresh those skills and learn new things. Second of all, this dude literally streams multiple times a week providing free art education resources and Q&A sessions for his viewers. I've gained so much knowledge and insight just by re-watching his old streams and, and lurking on Twitch streams when he goes live. His teaching style of simplifying forms and breaking down concepts like drawing figures in perspective have helped me immensely with relearning the fundamentals in a fresh and enjoyable way. He also has a 30-day art bootcamp series going all through the fundamentals for free on his channel, including a anatomy and perspective, and he also has PDF compilations of notes and worksheets for an extremely good price for the amount of content in the documents. I strongly recommend this channel and content for beginner artists, but also any artists looking to brush up on their fundamentals. Before I start listing off all these online art resources, if you're spending a lot of time learning and developing your art skills from online resources, it's crucial to safeguard your activity by keeping your computer and personal information secure and protected with a VPN. So I would like to introduce the sponsor of this video, Surfshark VPN. What is a VPN, you might be asking? A VPN is a virtual private network that works by masking or covering up everything you do online. So no one can snoop on you and see the unhealthy amount of time you spend looking up anatomy references. One subscription covers an unlimited amount of devices. You can stay safe on public Wi-Fi for all those aesthetic cafe art sessions, get the best deals with online shopping, and finally afford that fancy sketchbook you've been eyeing. Another one of my favorite features is the ability to gain access to different content libraries around the globe. Now, what does this mean? It means that American Netflix constantly changes and removes my favorite movies and TV shows, but with Surfshark, I can always find my favorite Ghibli movies, international shows, and more for a perfect fall movie night. With Surfshark's 30-day money-back guarantee, you can, you can try out the various features and feel secure knowing that you have time to see if it's the perfect fit for you and cancel if needed before the 30 days is up. So there's literally no risk 
in trying it out. On top of that, Surfshark gave me a special deal for my audience, you guys, to keep you protected in your online art learning and discovery, save you money, and access the movies and content you love. So get Surfshark VPN at surfshark.deal slash sketches of Shay and enter promo code sketches of Shay for an exclusive offer and three extra months for free. The link will be at the top of the description. Thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring this video and supporting my channel and thank you to all who interact with the content and give gauge with my channel to get me more sponsors like these. All right guys, stay safe online and now back to the video. Okay, so these are about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 13, 30 second poses. I kind of feel like doing one like one more session of 30 second. I, f I finally felt like as I was getting into these, I was getting a lot more looser and I felt like I was really getting the energy of the pose. So I'm gonna do a couple more and then move into a longer pose. So yeah, let's do that. The next artist and channel I've used to aid in improving my anatomy and general drawing skills and basically my whole art journey is Marc Brunet, specifically a method he mentioned in his video, quote, the secret rule to learn drawing faster. We all want to save time and make sure we're getting the most out of our studies and practice so that we can make the art we're passionate about sooner. He explains the explorer's path and the dealer's path of learning a skill, in this case, drawing and art. The explorer's path being kind of throwing yourself into a painting or a project and learning on the way and picking up skills through learning on the job basically. You're immediately learning the skills needed for that specific project and you have a clear goal for what you want to achieve and you're sort of reusing about 80% of the knowledge you've learned for each similar project. For me, this method relates most to throwing yourself into figure drawing sessions or drawing your characters and looking up key anatomy, perspective tips, and continuing to do figure-based work and learning along the way, learning by doing. I tend to do this a lot in my own work. The other path that he suggests might be a better option for me moving forward. So the dealer's path is more for people who don't have a clear goal of what they want to study or what they want to create, I guess. And you only end up studying more broader and more applicable st skills that can that you can use for multiple pieces. In relation to anatomy, this could mean learning how to construct a simple mannequin first, understanding and breaking down the form, and being able to apply that to any figure or creature that you want to draw. Mark reiterates to focus on knowledge you'll be able to use most often, and since you're truly understanding the form of whatever you're studying, it will make shading and lighting easier because you can now envision the objects and space in your head, making everything else so much easier and intuitive. I feel like that's a super important part with a learn with learning anatomy and something that I kind of failed to realize when I was starting out. You don't just want to copy what you see into a 2D representation on paper. Really understanding the 3D form and understanding the structure of what you're drawing enhances the believability and weight of what you're illustrating. and makes it so much easier to apply and imagine in your own head so you're not constantly looking up references for a specific pose. Envisioning that you're building a figure rather than just drawing the outline of the parts has really helped me understand form and approve a lot more effectively and efficiently. Furthermore, most of Mark's videos that I tend to enjoy the most are his more like theory-based videos and habit tips when making artwork. Um, they're super easy to watch and take notes on since they're more succinct and short, so they're really perfect for anyone being overwhelmed with a certain concept and just wanting to get a simple explanation on things. And he adds a bit of humor in his videos, which I appreciate, and it's just, it's fun to watch. Moving on, I'm kind of going to rapid fire my way through a couple more channels that I find really helpful in in relation to learning anatomy in the past and present. So if you've explored the art education space on YouTube, you certainly stumbled upon this amazing channel. Proko. Proko literally has 121 video playlists covering the entire range of human anatomy, specifically the videos how to study anatomy correctly, and it covers pretty much everything. All of them are really short demos and a lot of the longer content is through their paid online art classes, but I, I still find them as good introductions and refreshers, and the tips in the videos are applicable and insightful and really gives you real world drawing knowledge, basically. They're also a great entryway into learning more complex anatomy so I would really give them a try if you're brand new to all of this. Moving on, 
there is the channel Cynics Designs. I used to watch a ton of Cynics Designs in middle school and high school and always reference back to their anatomy quick tips playlist to learn how to draw and paint specific parts of the body and apply it to my own work. So they're longer form, so they go into more depth than Proko or Marc Brunet. So if you're looking for deeper anatomy dives, that playlist is a great resource and also goes over painting and stuff like that. So I really recommend it if you want a slower and more in-depth approach. I also want to mention that this is a Tombow Fudenosuke brush. I think that's how you say it. It's like, I like to use it a lot for just drawing and just having fun in general. I don't do a lot of like traditional ink work, but I do like to use ink to sketch sometimes. And with figure drawing, it kind of uh, gets rid of the possibility to erase and waste time that way. So I like to use um, ink a lot of the times when I do figure drawing. So after doing these, I noticed that I get stuck in like little places and don't really think about the figure as a whole. And I think that's what leads to a lot of the stiff figurative work that I'm doing and that I'm not really a fan about and just kind of getting stuck on like a certain body part and not necessarily getting like the motion of the whole thing. So I'm trying to find like an example. This one I felt like was really excellent because I got the initial gesture of the pose and then the way that the different that the torso and the pelvic bone were angled. I feel like I really nailed that. And then just adding on the extra bits was a lot easier and it kept like the energy and the motion of the pose. Same with this one, even though it's like just like a partial figure, that initial like line down of that leg holding the weight of the figure, I think is really great. So I'd like to focus on that more as I continue to do these and really um, get the energy and the gesture paired with the anatomical skills. Okay, now I think I'm gonna do like two to three minute poses to see how well I can keep the energy of the pose at, as well as like keeping the anatomy and the structure there. So let's do that and then I'll think that'll be a great benchmark for how things will be. Oh, and then I also wanna do some like drawing from imagination and figures from imagination. So I'll do that after this, but yeah, this will be the two minutes. So let's go. The next channel is Sykra. I also used to watch Sykra's channel a lot in high school and middle school and found them very similar to Cynic's, but offering more general fundamental drawing and painting skills. Getting started tutorials for beginners playlist offers so much theory and insight to improving your fundamental drawing skills in a really approachable and casual way. They also have a playlist specifically for anatomy tutorials as well. I feel like Sykra and Cynic's videos are kind of, kind of like a, from an older generation of art YouTube content, a lot more chill casual, approachable, and not really as flashy and rapid fire as some art education content is now. Not criticizing creators who make that type of content. It works well with the algorithm, so get that back. They're so... These specific creators are kind of really nostalgic to me. I remember lying on my bedroom floor with my sketchbook and <laughs> I think like the family laptop or something, drawing along to Cynics and Psychra and just being like hungry to learn and just practicing all the time. Moving on to another nostalgic art content creator of mine, Ahmed Adori. He has a whole tutorial playlist going over drawing fundamentals and the human figure, as well as some tours of his sketchbook, which I always found so inspiring and interesting and still do. He has posted a lot of critique sessions on his channel, which I also find super helpful in learning and seeing things being corrected. Whenever I'm watching any sort of critique video, I always try and see if if I can apply what the critic or critiquer is saying to my own artwork and kind of use it as a way for me to learn and put myself in that place because I feel like constructive criticism is so important to growth and may catch a lot of what you're overlooking and ultimately lead to improving faster. So if you're able to obtain a mentor or talk to a professional artist or share your work with them, I would highly recommend that. Or even just friends. I feel like I really love to share my artwork in progress and get feedback from my partner and I'm so lucky that he's an artist but like building relationships with multiple different artists and becoming friends and growing together can be really inspiring and motivating and supportive in your passion to grow. In school I learned so much from my peers and their insight and it's truly valued valuable to be in a critique space no matter how scary it can be. It can be a little personal sometimes but ultimately this critique is to make you better and I feel like anyone offering 
offering constructive feedback is really wanting to help you grow. And I think it, I don't know, critique is good, even though it's scary. But yeah, Ahmed Eldori, he has a great channel um, and offers a lot of great insight into art educational material and critique and applicable knowledge. So yeah. Okay, so these were the two minute figures. Um, yeah, nothing more to say. I'm, it's not that I'm disappointed in myself. I just know that I can do better and I'm just, haven't had a ton of practice. So I'm just gonna let this sit for a moment. I do like the energy in some of these, like this lying position is not too bad. Uh, this isn't too bad, but I definitely start to like scumble a bit and not really pay attention to what I'm doing. And now I'm just gonna do a page of uh, figures from my imagination, just trying to build the human form up just from what's inside my brain. I used to do this exercise all the time when I was like, when I was memorizing and learning anatomy, I really recommend it, but I wanted to do this to have something to look back on after I do all these studies I plan on doing and these refreshers so I can see how much I've improved and to remind myself how important it is to study and go back to fundamentals and refresh those skills. The next channel uh, I really like to use for more fine art or studio life drawing. The channel is Love Life Drawing. They provide a lot of applicable tips in relation to figure drawing and looking at how different artists interpret the figure and what we can learn from them. That's another great thing, looking at other artists, studying what other artists are doing and just trying to implement little things from those artists into your own work can really help you improve faster and help you figure out things that you've been struggling with. Love Life Drawing is a chill, nice channel and it's perfect for learning at a moderate pace without having to commit to hour-long videos if that's not your thing. Really easy to consume and really insightful, I think. Last but not least, the channel and artist Carolyn Peters has been great for getting back into anatomy and figure drawing practice and brushing up on basic drawing skills. I recently found her channel in like the last couple of months as I was preparing for this video and trying to work on my own figure drawing skills and they've been immensely helpful with bite-sized tutorials and techniques that keeps things from being too overwhelming and honestly, it's kind of been nice to have a bit more variety in the art learning space. There are very few female creators producing like art educational content. Um, maybe I just haven't found more of them yet, but I found her content recently. I'm like, where where has she been when I was like growing up and stuff? But I found her videos and immediately subscribed. She covers gesture drawing, understanding form of anatomy, which I'm really interested in and think is so important to having strong figures and even touches on topics like drawing from imagination and conceptualizing 3D forms in your head, which is a big struggle for any skill level, I think. She literally has a whole playlist on drawing from imagination, so really make sure to check it out if you've also been struggling with that. I really recommend her for more approachable, laid back, informative, applicable tips that can be implemented into basically any style of drawing along with her more art theory and mindset practice tips. I feel like mindset is so important when making art and I find that watching more theory or psychology of drawing and applying that to my art can often be so much more helpful than learning like a particular specific skill like a certain piece of anatomy, perspective, design, etc. Kind of like going back on that idea of the dealer's path mindset mentioned with Marc Brunet, learning like a more general tip or mindset can help you in all areas of your creation. Now, I just want to quickly make some like honorable mentions for art channels that I really like. I, I know it, this video is already getting long enough, so I don't want to like gush about all my favorite creators, but just wanted to mention Ergo Josh. They have like really great art education content. The Drawing Database, Northern Kentucky University. That's literally the channel name, but there's lots of good info there and demos. And yeah, I would check them out if you're interested in that. The Drawing Database has more like lengthy in-depth anatomy videos. So if you really want like hardcore knowledge, I would go with that but I feel like Ergo Josh, is, Ergo Josh is a little bit more easy to consume. It's like your standard YouTube video. And I'm sure there's so many new instructional accounts and other artists helping people learn and develop their skills. And a lot that I didn't mention, I would recommend using search terms on YouTube um, to try and like discover things on your own because it can be really useful to develop the skill on how to find art resources. So I would recommend search terms like anatomy for artists, 
constructive anatomy for artists, understanding form for artists, anatomy and perspective, just all those types of things like your basic fundamentals using that to search and find the content that you want so yeah. Moving on, I wanted to quickly mention some Instagram accounts I like to study and get drawing and anatomy inspiration from if you're not really super into video content or you don't have the time to like watch a bunch of stuff. I feel like at Tom Fox Draws on Instagram is a really great person to look at. I took an online class from him and his concepts and ways of breaking down the human form into simple shapes and keeping things as simple as possible really worked with my brain and it helped me so much with delving into perspective work with anatomy. There's also at Will Weston on Instagram. These are more like detailed technical anatomy posts from the classes that he teaches. I I can't remember where, but he teaches like bigger classes and he just posts the, the drawing boards online. And I like to look at these boards every once in a while to understand the form and structure of specific muscles and bones. It's kind of overwhelming to look at at first glance. There's so much information in the images that he posts, but I use it more as like a charcuterie board, like picking and choosing some elements to slowly include in my artwork instead of thinking I have to do everything at first. So that's really helpful. And I believe he also posts recorded demos on his website. I can't remember how much it costs, but that's also an option, but his free like Instagram images on his account are, I still just learn from those and I, I learned so much, so yeah. So these are the figures from Imagination. They're not as bad as I thought they would be, honestly. Uh, but then again, they are pretty rough. I have a horrible habit of drawing the head first and then trying to attach a body onto it. So I really need to get over that habit because it, I think like with this one, it leads to like a stiffer pose and I'm trying to like squish all these body parts in there and it just doesn't work. So definitely need to work on that. So I think the main goal for this whole uh, video is to really focus on relearning some anatomy that I've lost throughout the couple months that I haven't been figure drawing as regularly. Key points and not completely going through the whole bones and muscles of the figure, but enough to make my figures look more believable and enough for me to remember just key points. Now for some like basic websites that I use for figure drawing resources and references rather than like social media platforms and stuff. These are all pretty much free unless I state otherwise. So the first one is George Bridgman's Constructive Anatomy. This book really helped me to start thinking about building figures and learning form over just copying photos and producing flat figures. It's completely free online and I I really recommend going through it and looking at the way Bridgman has broken down the figure. The in-depth anatomy and naming the muscles may be too overwhelming for beginners, so maybe just looking at the basic shapes Bridgman uses to break down the form is a great place to start. Also, another channel I forgot to mention, but Modern Day James on YouTube has a full video series of understanding Bridgman's anatomy if you're struggling to study on your own and need a guide. I used these videos when I first looked at uh, George Bridgman. George Bridgman's book and it was super helpful in finding the nuggets of wisdom and understanding anatomy in totality from another artist. The second one is quick poses. One way to really apply the anatomy and structure you know is to use image generators to set up like figure drawing sessions for yourself if you don't have access to in-person figure drawing sessions. So quick poses is a great option and they have a great variety of poses and angles. The site does contain nude figures and you aren't able to just filter for clothed figures, so keep that in mind when exploring the site. Third one is Line of Action. Line of Action is also a good site and also includes expressions, animals, and environments in their databases. There's also a clothed model options. If you're not comfortable with the, the nude model, you can practice from clothed models. The next one is Croaky Cafe. Croaky Cafe is my basically my favorite figure drawing website, I think. I've been using it since high school and they regular update regularly update the database with new poses and there's just a great variety of models and content on that website. However, it is based on a paid membership system. So it's just $36 for the whole year, which is $3 a month covering the cost of the creators and the models. This site does contain nude figures right on the front page. So be careful about exploring the site if you're not comfortable with that. This site also includes expressions and plein air references and class video sessions to draw from. And 
Every February, they host Figuary, a daily figure drawing challenge, and release a figure drawing session every day. So I would check it out if you're interested in that. I think it's a great affordable option for great photos and references, and I use them all the time. I just renewed my subscription this month, so yeah, definitely recommend. The last image database I want to recommend is Adorka Stock Photos. You've probably seen their photos all over Pinterest and DeviantArt. They're a perfect option if you're a younger artist or not comfortable with nudity and they have so many photos on DeviantArt in their own website. They do have a Patreon for just like $2.50 a month. You can get access to over like 60 plus pose packs, which is crazy. I might be investing in that soon, but yeah. They also have a free figure drawing session feature on their website that I'll link down below for time practice studies. And yeah, they have really great photos. I feel like they have a great variety in models and the poses that they do. And yeah, a better option for people who are not as comfortable with nude drawing because they're, I'm pretty sure all their photos are mostly covered, so yeah. Okay. That's all the resources that I've used and continue to use to improve my figures. I just want to remind, remind you that you can read all the material, watch all the videos, and learn all of the theory, but you won't truly see improvement until you actually start drawing and practicing and implementing what you've learned into your own art. So I just want to mention some of my own personal tips and how I actually apply what I've learned from these creators to improve and refresh my skills. So here are my own personal best tips for improving and refreshing your skills. So tip number one, I feel like simplifying and really understanding form is the best way to start out and then work your way to detail. After studying a lot of Tom Fox's work, it really made me realize that simplification is key to starting out building realistic human forms. And so many artists on this list of resources I've given to you have reiterated the same idea in a different way. I think sometimes we get overwhelmed and feel like there is so much to learn especially with anatomy it's so complex and it's it's hard to understand so we have to learn we feel like we have to learn all the muscles and joints and bones and all that stuff but i feel like starting out with simple figures like with tom fox's box mannequin you can see it up on his instagram and simplica simplification of the figure breaking down the figure so that we truly understand the forms is way more doable and better in the long run establishing a strong base of understanding to add muscles and detail on top of leads to stronger art in my opinion. And like what Marc Brunet mentioned, learning applicable and general knowledge of forms and concepts can lead you under, lead you to understanding a wider variety of things to draw and help you improve more efficiently in the long run and basically be able to like pick up drawing a certain thing more easily. Tip number two, perspective is sometimes more important than the anatomy itself. That sounds kind of strange, but I think Kesa mentioned in one of his streams that you can't have good anatomy without perspective and that really stuck out to me. As I'll mention later, I'm really trying to push myself to truly understand form and perspective to give my figures and artwork that extra bit of solidity and technical strength that I've always strived for in my art. Yes, I, I kind of have a general understanding of perspective, but I really want to get more comfortable with it since it's such a key component in anatomy and the type of artwork I want to create. More dynamic scenes, poses, and illustration compositions really require a solid understanding of form and perspective and I'm really ready to like tackle that and, and continue to work on that. So perspective also leads to such a better way and understanding of drawing from imagination, learning to be able to visualize objects in space on a grid in a certain perspective and being able to get that on paper is such a crucial skill to me and the character-based work I want to create. There's also an Andrew Loomis quote I found and I really think it it captures my sentiment about perspective and the rest of the fundamentals in my current art journey. If you intend to make a living at drawing, by all means, learn the rules of perspective now and do not have them bothering you and your work for the rest of your life, which that's such a real thing. I think that's really like bit me in the butt the past couple years, not really having that so solid knowledge of it and taking the time to learn it years ago. And it's it's a bit of a struggle right now. So so yeah, that, that, that quote, really sums up everything I'm trying to explain. Getting a solid grasp of a concept 
and truly understanding it is way better than like speeding through it and rushing to learn everything. So tip number three, break down figures from your favorite artists. And I feel like a lot of people will say this, but a quick exercise I like to do if I'm feeling stuck with understanding form or stuck with understanding form is to look at how other figurative artists have interpreted the figure while maintaining strong form and perspective, even though it might be highly stylized. So Claire Wendelin is one of the main artists I look to when doing this. Um, her artwork is generally some of the strongest figure work I've ever seen, in my opinion. So basically, I'll bring an artist's work in Clip Studio or Procreate and draw on top of their figures, trying to sort of reverse engineer their structure or try and recreate their figure in my sketchbook and make key notes in how they describe certain anatomy. Studying from a particular style or process can really help you to build your own style and understand the form of the figure more clearly. The next tip I wanna mention is mileage, um, intentional and focused repetition and iteration. So what I mean is in, in the case of anatomy, so using gesture drawing to warm up your hand before starting to work on projects can be really beneficial like doing 30 second quick drawings and just doing like 10 or 20 of those before you start your real drawing sessions so basically just being able to draw the figure again and again with like intention and focus trying to understand the structure of a figure and just drawing it multiple times another helpful exercise in stretching your brain to construct the figure on your own is to look at a reference for about like 10 15 seconds then putting the reference away and trying to reconstruct the figure to the best of your ability from your memory and imagination and after you've done that you can compare your drawing to the reference and self-critique areas you struggle with how well you captured the perspective and ultimately how well you describe the form of the figure. This has really helped me draw from imagination and you can make it even more interesting and fun by incorporating your own characters and drawing your characters in those poses and make it more personal and just ultimately a lot more interesting than just a basic study. Tip number five, applying what you've learned to finished drawings and paintings to cement your knowledge. So basically give your practice a purpose. Like what, why are you practicing? What are you doing this for? You can study and practice day and night, but if you don't apply it to the art and subjects you actually want to create, then what's the point? If you want to be a character artist, no matter where your skills are at, you should make character art. If you want to be an illustrator, make illustrations and so on and so forth. I personally fell into this trap uh, on and off where I would only do stuff and study in my sketchbook and not ever make the full illustrations I wanted to because I didn't feel like I was ready yet. I didn't have the skills necessary for that. Yes, you can learn so much by practicing and preparing, but in turn, actually applying your new knowledge or anatomy or whatever concept you're learning can really cement your skills and memory and also lead you to learn new things throughout the process that practicing will, won't really teach you. So for me personally, whenever I learn something new anatomically or figure wise or perspective i try to implement it in the next piece i'm working on or the current piece i'm working on and it's really helped me to remember and cement my abilities to draw characters in space and better my knowledge of constructing constructing the figure from imagination and then here's my last tip don't feel discouraged or ashamed if you have to do a refresher, reminder, or go back a couple steps if things are too overwhelming or beginning to get lost. That's literally what I'm doing in this video and what I've shown throughout the whole process of this video. It's just sketchbook sessions of me relearning the figure, using new methods, and just practicing and going back to the basics. I feel like it's always best to go back to the basics when things are getting too overwhelming or it feels like you're de-progressing in your art journey. I feel like specifically with anatomy, if I'm not drawing figures from imagination or from reference regularly, I tend to get a bit rusty as shown in the beginning of this video. Those weren't like the best drawings I've done and I've drawn a lot better in the past so that rustiness just occurs from not using that skill. But as this video has progressed with taking some time out of the week to devote to studying a little each day, I'm now a lot more comfortable and drawing figures has come a lot more easily to me in the past couple days. Be patient and enjoy the process of learning. It takes time to learn and grow and you don't want to burn out in the process. So don't rush yourself to know everything in a month or even a year. Year, make baby steps, set realistic goals for yourself to reach while remembering to make fun art that you enjoy and maybe implementing your newfound techniques in that art, but make, make sure you're taking the time to make fun art that's a little less uh, taxing to make and a lot less 
quote unquote hard to do. So don't let the practice suck the joy out of drawing characters and people for you. Really make sure you're taking the time to have fun. Take a break from constantly learning and improving. I find my artist brain needs time to process information and apply what I know before rapidly moving on to a new concept. Seeing how I can apply it to the art I'm passionate about really reinforces my purpose in creating and, and keeps my artist heart full and continue wanting to continue to create. So just making sure you're keeping that like personal art or that fun art in with that will keep you from burning out and kind of losing your purpose throughout the whole journey of improving. Oh my goodness, I feel like I'm losing my voice. This video is so long. In conclusion, um, these are some of the things I'll be doing moving forward and just some encouragement I want to give to other artists wanting to improve. So after these couple weeks of revisiting the fundamentals, rewatching some of my favorite art instructors, as well as finding some new ones, moving forward with my anatomy skills and basically general art skills, I really wanna focus on perspective in my work, lose a bit of my perfectionist tendencies and basically choose quality over quantity when studying with the the dealer's method like Marc Brunet introduced. My time is extremely valuable to me as someone who owns a shop, does content creation full time and trying to make this whole art career work. So I wanna get the most bang out of my buck with my studies. And I plan to revisit these videos multiple times and use the resources I mentioned to get me closer to the place I wanna be with my illustrations and whatever I wanna make. And I hope they help you do the same. So make sure to check out all the resources down below. I really hope they help you. Yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I know it was a pretty long one with a lot of information, but I really wanted to share more in depth of the free resources and channels I've used and continue to use to improve my anatomy and artwork. You really don't have to spend money on art classes to learn. There's so much free content on YouTube and for younger or beginner artists out there, I just wanted to share all these resources to help get you started or continue your journey. Make sure to check out the artists I mentioned, all of them practically built my art career. So they're amazing and I hope they really help you out too. As you're checking out all these cool channels and websites, Make sure to keep your information safe and reminder to get Surfshark with the link down below at surfshark.deal slash sketches of Shea, entering the promo code sketches of Shea for an exclusive offer and three extra months for free. And reminder that if you want to see more of my anatomy work and notes, you can check out my anatomy sketchbook tour video or PDF up on my shop, over 200 pages of figure drawing and anatomy notes, as well as I have some new stickers and prints for the fall and some free digital brushes up on there so and I now also have membership tiers up on my ko-fi where I share exclusive art more behind the scenes of my process and sketchbook studies and big thank you to everyone who has signed up so far I just started this month of September so it's been super exciting but yeah all of that and more will be linked down below and yeah that's it make sure to like and subscribe if this video helped you I do more art content up on this channel a lot of draw with me's and you can follow me on Instagram for more art and sketchbook content as well. Have a great weekend guys, maybe do some figure study and have fun with making art above all else. So yeah, okay, bye.